friends. My name is Anusha Sayet and I'm a children's book author and illustrator. And for the past two months, I've been painting pretty much every single day. For those of you who know me, you would know that this is extremely unusual for me because for most of my artistic career, I have just been a digital illustrator. For all of my picture books, for pretty much all of my projects, I have just exclusively been working on like either Photoshop or Procreate. I love it. But Earlier this year, I had made a goal for myself. By the end of 2022, I wanted to be good at painting. Now you would think that if you knew how to digitally paint, that those skills would just automatically transfer to traditional media. Um, it did not. I have tried multiple times over the year to try to paint, to try to like even use a sketchbook. I would start and then within like a few days I would get very frustrated because I had that disconnect where I have the skills you know I know what it should look like I know you know my art fundamentals color perspective character design all of those kinds of things but my hands were just not doing what I wanted them to do what I failed to realize was that I was learning a new medium and that requires like a new set of skills which I just did not have and you don't get good at anything if you don't suck a little bit at the beginning. I did not have the patience for that, I was too frustrated, and so it never happened. Late last year, I was approached by Gallery Nucleus, which is a gallery in LA that does a lot of collaborations with animation people as well. I've done quite a few group shows with them in the past um, for this one that was like Disney travel posters, another one that was for like a Mulan anniversary show. But they had come to me and they were like, hey, would you be interested in doing a solo show? That thought was very intriguing to me and I was very excited. However, I knew that they would want completely traditional pieces and I didn't know if I'd be able to do that. We set a date for October 15th, which is coming up very, very soon. And I gave myself the goal that by the end of the year, by doing all of these paintings, I would finally learn how to paint. From February, I had started doing like my initial testings. I started working in a sketchbook, learning the fundamentals of gouache and painting and all of those things. And slowly but surely, I have been getting a little bit better each day and with every painting. But I took a lot of breaks because I had a bunch of other projects going on. However, with the gallery show deadline coming up, I realized that I had to book it, I had to get moving. And so from July 15th until September 15th, which is coming up, I have basically been drawing and painting every single day, except for the weekends, because I have work-life boundaries. The theme of the gallery show is going to be centered around my South Asian Pakistani heritage. And while I'm not focusing on any specific subjects, I'm trying to work with different types of aesthetics. So things like uh, fashion, textiles, animals, just all of these things that I am very drawn to. As of August 26, I have 12 paintings done and I am aiming to get 20. So about eight more and I have two weeks left and I think that I can do it, but you're gonna see me over the next two weeks just working and grinding, working and grinding, trying to get these paintings done. But let me show you guys what I have done so far. Hey friends, this is Anusha from the future. Please enjoy this rapid time lapse of a bunch of paintings that I did from July up until like mid-August, which is where this vlog begins. Unfortunately, I did not film these with my big old fancy camera. Um, I just took a bunch of TikToks and so you can see these are pretty poor quality videos and I really apologize for that, but I hope you guys still enjoy them. Don't worry, the rest of this vlog will not look like a pixelated mess. Anyway, uh, future Anusha out.
this is the majority of the paintings I've gotten done so far. I have three other ones at home, which I've forgotten to bring over. But you can see I have like a mix of different mediums, two different sizes and papers. The first one that you see over here, which is what I started painting in, is a 9 by 12 and I am using a XL watercolor sketchbook from Canson and it is 140 pounds, 300 grams. It is a cold press paper. So I initially bought this paper and the ones that I have home, these are the ones I started doing back in February. And I'm decently happy with them, but I realized as I was painting on these that I don't love cold press paper. Cold press paper, I don't know if you can see entirely, but it has like a little bit of a toothier grain to it which looks great. It's a lovely texture. However, I really found that I love doing mixed media. And on top of doing gouache, I'm adding color pencils, I'm adding like crayons and things like that. And I just couldn't get the level of detail that I wanted. So you can see an example of it in this piece over here where I do have like a great amount of texture all over here. However, I can't get like that nice clean, those edges that I want, the level of detail that I want, just because of that grain. I was using the small paper for a while and then I realized I should switch to something else. And so now I've been also doing my bigger pieces on some arches paper. I'm using hot press paper, 300 grams, 140 pounds, same thing. So this one does have like a little bit of grain and tooth to it, enough to give it a little bit of texture, but not too much where it gets in the way of doing like these fine little details works over here. I'm just gonna quickly run over the materials that I've been working with. In terms of materials, let's see what I've got. I've been using a little bit of the Dr. Peach Martin inks over here. I haven't been using it that much, but I love using it as the base for some of my paintings to get a little bit of a layer wash just because like the colors are so vibrant, but I just don't love that it is permanent. We get to my gouaches. Ignore how disgusting and gross and messy this is. First up, we have my Arteza gouache. This is like 60 colors. I had bought this pack before, like in 2018, 2017, back when I had no interest in painting and just like wanted to try it out. And my reasoning for getting like 60 colors was that it was really cheap for the price. I think it was like 30 bucks or something. I hate mixing paint. And so I figured that like, if I have like every single color on the planet, then I'd never need to mix paint. And while that was true, I did find that I only use like a handful of these paints. I still need to mix paints and I did find that the quality wasn't amazing. I'm glad that I have these, but I am slowly starting to switch them out for like better quality paints. My nice paints are in here. So I've got some Turner, I've got some Winston and Newtons. My absolute love right now is the Holbein paints. Like these are great quality, these are like beautiful, magnificent, but they are expensive. So I'm just like getting them as I need them. You guys don't know the difference between acrylic gouache versus regular gouache. Regular gouache is like a thicker watercolor. It's like water soluble. If I wet this palette again, then I can reuse these colors, no problem. However, acrylic gouache, once it dries, it's permanent. You can't use it again. I do like the idea of not wasting paint. So I keep using this palette until it's unusable. However, it's not great for layering. Because I'm working a more mixed media style where I'm layering paints on top of each other, I am finding a little bit difficult to add paint over paint. So over here, I had quite a tricky time because at a certain point, like I wanted, I had green uh, under these orange triangles and then I realized I didn't like the green so I wanted to paint orange on top of it. However, once I started putting paint on top of it, it started to disturb the green paint underneath and like mix with it. It's not great for layering, but I mean, every medium has its pros and cons, right? I've been using a lot of gold in my paintings as well and I absolutely love this Winsor & Newton Professional Acrylic gold paint. I recently also bought these Neo colors, which are super bright and vivid. I have a lot of trouble getting like a good level of detail with these because they're so chunky. And here are all of my Posca's. Uh, this is a very unstable drawer. I have quite a few colors in here and I like using these to also layer on top of my gouache because this does not mix as easily. They're really great for adding small things. As an example, you can see this, this, these little pearls, all of these are Posca. 
I could not achieve this with paint. And like I said, I'm kind of going for something South Asian, but I'm not really focused on anything specific. I initially started out by drawing a ton of girls. And these are the ones I did at home. You can see that they're all cute little girls. After I did the ones at home, I did this one and this one. And then I kind of realized that, you know what, I'm done drawing girls. Forget it, I should like try to branch out and do something else. And that's when I got really interested in architecture. So I started with this one because I had like some scrap paper. It's paper cut, which is something I've never really done before. I kind of realized that, you know what, this is like my chance to try different mediums. I got so stuck in the rut of painting cute girls, which is my little comfort thing. But this is my chance to explore. It's fine if nothing's perfect, it's fine if it's not amazing, but this is like where I can learn new things. So once I did this one, I did this painting over here. I did this one, which I'm really happy with. And this is also like a combination of paper cut. And you can see the depth in all of these little areas over here. Yesterday, I made two little mini paintings because I realized that I haven't done this small size in a while and might as well, right? I should have like a mix of like big and small. So I did this one really quick, not really caring too much about neatness. And I think this turned out kind of interesting. And I tried to do something different with this one and do something monochromatic with ink because again, I was like, let's try a new medium. Let's try something different. And I don't love this one. I'm almost out of battery. So I'm gonna film this little section really quick. Uh, and I'm also like insanely hot. Just like look how sweaty I am. Like I said, this is the 26th. I have 12 paintings done and I want to try to get eight more and if I have a lot of time and I get done early then like I want to try to shoot for 25 so we're gonna do a little bit of painting today I don't know what I'm gonna do now because I think I'm tired of doing architecture so I might go back to doing girls I think I want to do some stuff with like elephants and tigers or maybe rickshaws and truck art so yeah let's see I don't know <laughs> before working on any paintings I try to do as much planning as possible I first do a bit of brainstorming in my sketchbook this is a what is it called I'm gonna write it up over here because I can't remember. This was recommended to me by a bunch of pals. I know that Cheyenne Barton recommends it. I know that Fran Nerd uses it. It's absolutely great. I'm actually like halfway through the sketchbook right now. I'll do a bunch of studies and sketches in my sketchbook. And then if I see something interesting, I'll translate it into a painting. For example, this guy over here eventually became that monochromatic ink piece with a few changes here and there because this was a little bit of a study. This was me at a coffee shop just goofing around coming up with ideas and I ended up painting every single one of these which is really funny. So I think this is kind of the way to do it. For my next few paintings I'll do like a bunch of sketches right now and then hopefully some of them will be good enough to paint. Earlier on, I did a bunch of these rickshaw style drawings, which I'm still quite happy with. And I do eventually want to do something with these, but I'm not really sure what yet. And so I don't think I'm ready to paint these just yet. I think I want to get back to girls or animals for a little bit. I'll leave this for another day and we're going to focus on some new sketches right now. You've probably also seen that I do a lot of florals and pattern work in my paintings. I try to do like a bunch of studies and explorations of flowers, patterns. I try to look at a lot of like old South Asian style textiles and paintings for inspiration for like borders and things like that. And I'll just like draw them all onto like this huge page over here so that while I'm painting, if I ever get stuck, then I can refer to this for inspiration.
it is the end of the day now. It's like close to five o'clock and I am done with this painting. I think I forgot to mention that like I usually spend two days on a painting. For the past few days, I've been trying to be a little bit looser, a little bit more just out of the box. And so the, for the past two days, like yesterday and the day before, I was doing two paintings in a day. I'm also kind of like trying to catch up to my big goal. But today took one full day and I'm thinking next week I'll do like a much more intensive two-day painting. But I just wanted to show you how it turned out. Here is this guy over here. Um, it's not too bad. I'm not, I don't know, I'm not in love with it. It's a little bit different from what I've been doing so far. I'm not super in love with it, but I will say that I had posted this one that I did yesterday. And it was my first time trying out ink. It was my attempt at doing something monochromatic, something inspired by like porcelain. Besides the point, I made this and I was really <laughs> unhappy with it. I think this was like the one piece I've done so far that like I absolutely hate it. I posted it on my Instagram being like, oh, you know, I guess they can't all be winners. And I had a lot of people message me being like, what are you talking about? This looks really great. I always find it so fascinating that like an artist's taste sometimes will vary so differently from the audience's taste because this happens to me all the time when I'm making merch for conventions or like my online store where I'll design something thinking like, oh my God, this is gonna sell so well, it's gonna be amazing, and then no one buys it. And then the ones that like, I think aren't gonna be popular at all, like for some reason, those end up being really popular. You never know, right? Hopefully someone likes it enough to buy it at the gallery show, but I don't know, I thought it was kind of nice knowing that even stuff that you might think is a failure. What is it? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You know, who knows? Who knows? Today's Friday. On Monday, I'm going to start again and do another piece. Hey friends, it is Monday. It is the 29th. We're pretty much at like the end of the month, which is absolutely crazy. I had wanted to do a lot of things over the weekend to prep for my paintings because I have pretty much gone through all of my sketches right now. I don't entirely know what I'm going to be painting this week. Probably something to do with rickshaws, maybe more girls, maybe more tigers. I'm not entirely sure. So I'm going to spend this morning doing a couple of like concepts to try to figure it out and plan my sketches for the week. I had wanted to <laughs> do something over the weekend, but unfortunately I had zero time for that because my goodness, what a jam-packed weekend. This coming week on Friday, this Friday, I am getting married again. For those of you who probably don't know, I did get married in September of 2020, two years ago, but unfortunately, you know, it was a COVID wedding. You know, we're Pakistani. We love doing the whole five day shindig with 300 people. Unfortunately, we could not do that. You know, I'm really happy that we got married. I'm really happy with like what the ceremony that we had. It obviously was not like our dream event. And I still have like my reception outfit sitting in my closet. So on Friday, we're finally having our big reception shindig with all of our friends finally invited. This weekend was just like a lot of prep for that. And probably this week, I don't know how much painting I'm actually going to do because of all of these last minute preppings and things like that. And I should try to take it easy this week, but we'll see. I started recording like an entire monologue and then I realized my thing wasn't even recording. So I have to do this again. But basically what I was talking about when it wasn't even recording, a big old art supply hall. My favorite, favorite art supply store in the city, Gortzman's. There was like this certain paint that I was looking for and they didn't have it in stock. And I was like, hey, can you put me on the wait list? And they were like, you got it. Once I got there, I found out that they had like a 20% off sale off of everything. I wanted to share my haul. Holbein came out with a series of paint sets which are like their season series. There's like a winter, summer, fall. You can only buy them as a set online and I don't need like all of those colors, right? However, I found out that Gortzman sells them in singles and so obviously I had to get them. So these are the colors that I got. They're absolutely beautiful. And of course, like originally I only went to get one particular shade, which is this one. I think this is like so beautiful and unique. Cork yellow. And so originally I had only went to get this one, but once I saw there was a sale, I was like, absolutely, I have to get the others. So the blue is really pretty. The cork yellow is really pretty. And I also got this pale coral, which I think is gorgeous. So after I got the paints and I realized that there was a sale, I also got a bunch of color pencils. So these are favorite castells. I have four watercolor pencils and one regular color pencil. I personally, I don't love the favorite castells. Prismacolors just have like such a strong, vivid 
waxy texture to them but since they were on sale like why not right and originally this was all i was gonna get and then as i was at the counter i saw this so you can see that this is like the teeniest of teeny 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 brushes like look how tiny that brush is but when i saw it i i got so excited and the reason is that as much as I love traditional painting, I don't feel like I'm fully there yet. I have been like improving a lot over the past few months, but one thing that like I just cannot understand is getting that small level of detail. I don't have like a strong control of my hands, like my hands do like tremble a bit. If I'm drawing something like a straight line, like, oh my goodness, it's gonna be so, so, so wobbly. Doing small, intricate details, I have like so much trouble with. And in digital art, I can undo, I can zoom in, all of that stuff, which you can't do traditionally. I've been trying a lot of different brushes, but I can never get one that like gets as small as I want it to. And also this is because I haven't been taking care of my brushes. They end up getting like frayed out. So I'm gonna take very good care of this little brush and I'm gonna test it out today and hopefully I can get the level of detail that I want. This was my haul. And one other thing that happened at Gortzman's, which I thought was really cute. While I was checking out, the girl at the counter who was really sweet, after I paid, she asked me if I was a children's book illustrator and I was like, yes. Yeah, she recognized me, she was a fan of my work, and I definitely felt very big-headed after that for being a little bit of a minor celebrity. Anyway, let's get to work. Before I forget, I also picked up a bunch of my earlier paintings that I did. These are the ones that I started off in February of this year when I was just starting my illustration painting journey. These are still pretty cute, but I will say that I definitely feel a lot of improvement on these. Something like this, which I think is really cute, but if you will see the one that I've posted online, it has a lot of edits to it. I completely like transformed her face, I cleaned up a lot of things because I really wasn't confident with my level of detail and reproduction and everything. The file that I've posted online doesn't look too similar to this one. But now, with my newer pieces, I have so much more confidence. I barely, I, if anything, I don't like retouch them at all digitally afterwards. And then these ones, I actually started off with a digital sketch and a color plan out beforehand. I don't really do them with my newer pieces now. I just kind of like go with the flow, which I couldn't imagine doing earlier this year.
get to my absolute favorite part of the painting process where I very gently remove my tape. All right, we have finished a, another painting. As you can see over here, I think I am decently happy with this one. Yep, I'm getting more and more confident about these now. And I think this one turned out a-okay. So let's move on to the next one. As a little update to where we are right now, it is 31st of August. We are at like the end of the month now. Absolutely crazy bananas. I, as of today, as of tomorrow, I guess, I have two weeks before I have to submit all of my artwork. I didn't come in yesterday because I had like errands to do and I was meeting up with one of my friends, uh, Danielle Bennett. Her art is absolutely amazing. I found out about her last year and she is part of like a picture book friend group that uh, we are all part of. She was actually one of the people who really inspired me to get into traditional painting because I really, really love her work. I met her in person for the first time yesterday and we had a really lovely time and a great chat and she gave me a lot of really good advice as well, which I'm really hoping to implement into my future pieces now, especially with my book that I'm gonna work on <laughs> right after this. She comes from a traditional painting background. She went to school for fine arts. She had a lot of really great advice on like how to be a bit more attuned to like the flow and the process of exploration and learning because she has like that fine art background and I learned so much from her. The more technical side of painting and like things like color mixing and being a bit more aware of how you put down brush strokes and things like that. I never learned in school, although that's partially my fault for like not being a French speaker because I went to like a French speaking art school. So it's entirely possible that my professors did talk about this stuff, but I was not absorbing it. So one of the things that she had said was to not be afraid with like making a lot of mistakes. And if you don't like a painting, just like redo it, which is unfathomable to me. Another thing she said was that I had initially like bought my paints from Arteza. I got that like 60 paint art set. I had bought it because I hate the idea of color mixing. I thought that, okay, if I have like 60 paints, I can just like, ne I never have to color pick. I can just like take the paint directly from the tube and just get exactly the color I want. Her argument was that one, you're not gonna use all of those paints, which is very true. I barely use any of those paints. And then two, if you are not color mixing, you never fully have like a grasp of color and how the paint works, how they interact with each other. And for a beginner, it's so much better if you have three colors like red, yellow, blue, plus black and white. Because you can make like literally every single color in the world just from like those three shades. And it's all about kind of like mixing with them, figuring out like the correct amounts and everything. And it is work, but it's important to do. And I never did that. So I'm actually going to be like clearing out my paints because I have like 80 colors right now. And it's like so annoying to go through everything. And I think I'm going to narrow it down to like my 12 favorite shades. And it'll force me to stick within a limited palette and to like color mix. I wasn't able to come in yesterday because I, meet, I was meeting up with her. So no painting yesterday. I finished up that tiger painting just now. And today's gonna actually be the last day of the week that I'm gonna be coming in to paint because stuff on stuff on stuff. It's like all, it's like a whole like wedding week. As much as I really need to catch up with work and like paint and everything, I do need to take a chill break and look after myself and focus on like being the bride again. I'll be back on Monday. Hopefully I can catch up a bit. I'm gonna try my best to get one more painting done because it's only 10.30. I might even be able to get two quick paintings in because I really wanna catch up. Let's do this. Uh, I'm going to clean out my drawers, like I said, and then we'll get to work on a new piece. Let's go. What a freaking mess. Um, this cute little drawer here that I got from Morrow Bay. It's like a little house. This has all of like my new uh, Holbein gouaches, but all of these Artezas, they have to go. I'm going to be as selective as I can. Definitely keep my like red, yellow, blues. A couple of my favorite shades at Arteza. They were a great starter paint, but I don't love a lot of them. I find like a lot of them have quite a bit of transparency. I had previously made like a full on color chart uh, when I first started painting earlier in February. You might've remembered that studio vlog. And so I'm gonna get go through these, see if there are any colors I like. Okay, you can see my Arteza box is up there now. I tried to get rid of as many colors as I could. I got one of my hay crates over here. I said I would be picky, but I actually was not. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 
18, 19, 20, 21 of my Arkiza colors. I don't know for sure how many of these I'm actually gonna use. And then of course I still have my Holbein box as well, which has another maybe 10 shades in it. I said I would do better, but I did not. 20 is definitely better than 60. It is September 8th now, and we are on the tail end of things. I pretty much have exactly a week to get all of these paintings done and sent out to Gallery Nucleus. I did not get that much work done <laughs> over the past week just because I had a crazy amount of stuff going on. I mean, you can see my henna. I mean, it's getting like really patchy now because it's been a couple of days. I had my reception slash anniversary. It went super well. I had a really great time. We've been busy with like house stuff, getting ready with the movers and everything and doing the last minute finalizations. So finally, on Monday, I did get to work on a couple of paintings. Number one is this piece uh, that I, I sketched this out a little bit earlier. A little girl and her cow. I sketched this out two weeks prior and I thought it'd be really good and perfect for Monday. I do really like how I added a bunch of texture to this. I don't feel great just because I haven't had like a good night sleep in a couple of days. So I'm thinking that like for the rest of this week for that I have to work on these paintings, I'll keep it pretty light. And I realized that I actually don't have that many smaller size paintings because I do want to make sure that this exhibition is somewhat accessible, that I have like a good range of higher priced pieces and smaller ones if people wanted to support my work but couldn't afford like the bigger pieces. And I also figured that this is when my vehicles should come into play because I still haven't drawn any of my rickshaws and truck art and things like that. So today I finally did one that you can see over here. I think it turned out pretty cute. I did make it a little bit smaller on the page than intended so I might just cut it off. I'm debating adding in a background and maybe like a shadow underneath. I'm not sure, I have like this idea of leaving this one blank so that I wouldn't have to like do too much work on it, but it's looking a little bit too empty. I think this is the way to go for like my last week, I'll just work on like a bunch of different variations of this type of like truck art type thing. So yeah, I'm currently gonna start working on a rickshaw piece. So yeah, two pieces in one day. It is almost five now, but I did start a little bit late. I'll at least like do the base of this one and then I'll start just like turning them out. I really would have liked to do one more big size piece, but honestly, I don't think I have it in me anymore. I'm getting kind of pooped, getting a little bit tired, and with the move and everything, I think it might just be a little bit too much. It is September 12th now and this is gonna be my last day of painting. I'm gonna aim for two. When I first set out to do these series of paintings for the gallery show, I had asked the gallery, okay, I don't have a lot of time, like how many do you usually expect to see for a show? And they said that 20 to 25 is a good number. They have had shows with like only 10 pieces, but obviously more is better. And so I gave myself the goal of doing 16. I hit 16 I think like two weeks back or something. I completed my 19th painting last week. I figured that 20 is a good number. 20 is like achieving my goal. But since I've been doing like these little mini vehicle paintings, I think I could get away with even doing two today. I might be pushing it because uh, I have some other stuff going on as well today. In about 45 minutes, I'm doing a podcast interview with Reading With Your Kids, which I'm promoting my book, which is very exciting. I love that I get to do like these interviews with people it's very it's very fun that's why i'm not entirely sure if i can get two done it would be nice because i i would hit 21 which i think is like a more impressive number than 20 paintings it is a really dark day today autumn is officially officially here in toronto and it's wet and gloomy outside which means it's dark in here and i have to turn on my stupid overhead fluorescent lighting. It's the 12th. On the 15th, I'm gonna mail everything out. I'm gonna go see if I can pick up some mailing tubes today. I have ordered a scanner uh, last night and hopefully that comes today as well because I realized that like if I'm gonna be sending these pieces out, I'm never gonna see them again because hopefully people are gonna buy them at the show and then in any case they would just stay with the gallery. And I do want to have like some record of these pieces because so far I've just taken a couple of iPhone pics. I tried to take some photos, like professional photos with my DSLR camera, but I just could not get it right. 
So I think the scanner is the way to go. It's weird. I'm not used to recording my traditional paintings. I'm so used to like digital art and just like, well, here it is. I can just post it up online now. And these are like really big pieces too. So I'm gonna have to make sure I scan them multiple times and stitch them together in Photoshop. Hopefully if the scanner arrives today, tomorrow I can scan them all up. So I have that digital library. And I'm hoping to compile them into a little art book that um, I would sell at Lightbox Expo and if the gallery is interested they can have a couple over there as well. So that's going to be tomorrow and then the 14th is going to be me packing everything up and on the 15th mail them out easy breezy and then that's it. The gallery show is going to be opening on the 15th of October. I'm very very happy with the work that I've done. I cannot believe that I've done these many paintings in a relatively short amount of time. I'm gonna do a more introspective looking back on the 14th, 15th, because right now I do have to get to work before this podcast thing comes up. But I'm gonna show you what I have right now. One of the illustrations that I did in my sketchbook was this cute little bike rickshaw thing. I sketched it up, I'm gonna paint it. I think for this one I'm gonna go for like a green and pink, like a pistachio green palette. You know, pistachio is very Pakistani thing. For my last painting, I don't entirely know what I'm gonna do for that. Maybe another bus, because I've done two rickshaws. I have this little bike. I think another bus would be a good idea, but I'm also like, maybe I'll quit with the uh, the vehicles and do one last girl, but the girls take like quite a bit of time. I don't know, we shall see. I can't believe it. To just recap on the timeline, because I completely forgot as well. I did three of these pieces in February, back when I had my like vacation time, and I first had the intention to learn how to paint. So I did three of them, those little guys. And then I took a very long break where I was busy with other things. And then I get an email from the gallery being like, hey, what's the progress like? And I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta do the rest of these. And then from August 1st until September 12th, I did the other 19, if I'm getting the math right. That's a lot of painting. I think I probably said this before, but if you told me that I would be painting pretty much like every single day, traditional media, for like a month and a half straight, I mean, I wouldn't believe you. I can't believe that I did it. The only thing I can really say is that I'm proud of myself for getting it done because August 1st, I really did not think that I could do it. I had even set out to like, if I did 16, I would be happy. I would be like beyond thrilled, but somehow I made it to 21. I'm supposed to ship these off in like the 15th, so I have a few more days and I could reach the ultimate goal of 25. But you know what? I think I'm content, I'm good as is. And I have other stuff to do now because I do have to get started on my book too. In a couple of days, I have my big move into our new house coming up. And just in general, I need a freaking break. Yeah, I, I'm i really happy. So what do I think of these pieces? I think I have like a really good mix of different sizes and different types of techniques and subject matter. I will say that I did kind of like lean towards my comfort zone a little bit at times where I would just stick to drawing like cute girls or like the same sort of like patterns and things. But I think that was kind of necessary so that like I would really enjoy myself. And I do feel like if I 
went for like some really complex subject matters, then one, it would take too long and two, I would get really frustrated by it. The other really interesting thing is that I ended up doing like a lot of playing around with different mediums and like getting very interesting results that I don't think I would have normally. Because of like that time crunch, usually in the past when I've worked on like some traditional media, because I'm trying to like recreate the look of my digital media, I will usually start off with like a digital sketch, you know, and that's what I did for my initial three pieces where I would start off with like a complete digital color rough, digital sketch and everything, just so I could try to mimic my traditional media as close as possible to my digital vision that I had. I did that for the first three and I was really frustrated that I could not reach the same kind of look that I was trying to go for that was in my head, but that was completely the wrong approach. And because I was kind of running out of time, I was like, okay, you know what, for the rest of these, I'm just gonna go improvise. And with some of them, I did start off with an initial sketch and with some of them, I was just like, you know, whatever, I'm going to do whatever my brain takes me. I'm just going to be along for the ride. And that did create some really interesting results and a lot of techniques that I might not have used, a lot of color palettes that I would normally not have tried out. It didn't always work because there are a couple of pieces and I'll point them out over here that I don't really love and I'm a little bit frustrated by. As I was doing this entire series of paintings, I did try to document as much of my process and share it on TikTok and on Instagram and just kind of like share it with my followers. And there would be times where I'd post a painting that I did not like. I'd be like, oh, I can't think, I guess they can't all be winners. And then I'd get a bunch of comments being like, what are you talking about? This is my favorite one so far. Or like, I love this one. As a side note, I've always found it really interesting what an artist's taste might be versus their audience. And this comes up a lot when I'm doing merch. I never know what prints I wanna have at a convention or what kind of enamel pin design I want in my shop. Cause I might think that like, oh, this is really cute. I, I would love to buy it. But you never know what the audience would like. And there are a lot of times where like, I will think that like, oh, this piece is gonna be like the best seller. This is gonna be amazing. Or even like when you're posting something online, but then it's always like, the one you hate that ends up being popular. And I think it's a really cool conversation about audience perspectives versus the, the artists and personal preference, whatever. I thought that was very interesting. I think my absolute favorite pieces are the pastel architecture piece, the patchwork girl piece, and then the big floral girl piece. I think those feel the most clean to me. And I think that the color palettes look really nice. I also really like the last bike rickshaw thing that I did as well. I think color palette is absolutely excellent. And I guess the biggest takeaway is that painting pretty much every single day for a month and a half really improves those skills. Now that I'm gonna start working on book two, which is gonna be traditionally painted, I mean, if you told me earlier this year, I would be like, hell no, I don't think I could do that. But my skills, I know absolutely have exponentially increased within a month and a half of just like experimenting and trying new things. My skill has definitely improved and really, really happy that I did this and that the timing kind of worked out where I feel like if I didn't have this gallery show, I might not have ever gone into traditional painting or like it might have taken a really long time for me to get into it because I had been saying that I was trying to dip my toes into it for a while, but it never really happened. But this was definitely the big push I needed. And I will say that like a similar thing happened a few years back in I think it was like the 2016 Inktober that I did where like that was like the only Inktober that I actually painted every single day and that also had like a huge increase in my skill. So word to the wise guys, these art challenges, I mean, they really do help. I know not everyone has like the time, it is like a huge mental load and creative load and everything, but it really helps. <laughs> I mean, October is almost here. I know uh, Furry Little Peach has their yearly Peachtober thing. I might be busy with my book now, so I don't know if I can contribute, but I would love to do something like this again of like this daily painting kind of thing, maybe like in the form of a daily warm up or something, cause this was fun. I think next up, I'm just going to scan all of these pieces so I have those digital records and then figure out how I'm gonna scan them out. But hooray, we did it.
know if you can tell on camera, but I'm like awkwardly, whatever. I'm awkwardly just like squatting down to like reach eye level. This is a new scanner that I bought. This is the Epson Perfection V600. I wasn't planning on buying a $300 or I think maybe $350 scanner. But the scanner that I had, which was a Canon Light, which I've loved for years, I got it when I was in college like seven, eight years ago. It had done the job, but I took it with me to the studio in the rain and then it died. So I needed a new scanner and I was like, you know what? I'm making traditional paintings now. This is gonna be in my portfolio. I need it to be good quality, so let's just splurge on a nice scanner. And my friend Katie Gorkesh was the one who recommended it. I do like it so far. It's scanning at pretty good quality. My only beef, and like maybe I should have gotten like a larger size scanner, but something like this, which is the 18 by 12, I think. 18 by 12 image. I have to scan it like four times and it's really cheesing me off. And even my 9 by 12, these little guys over here, it like just barely fits on it. So I have to scan these twice as well. So thankfully Epson comes with like their scan smart program. So I can automatically automatically stitch these in the scanner app very quickly. These however, uh, Epson said that they're too big. And so I have to bring them up to Photoshop and that's kind of a pain to have to scan these four times and then bring them to Photoshop. Today is the 14th. Tomorrow I'm gonna be shipping all of these out. So. I'm probably gonna spend the day just scanning all of these guys and then pack everything up and go to the post office soon. We're just gonna get through this, but yeah, if anyone wants a good quality scanner, I guess I do recommend the Epson 3 uh, V600. I don't have any issues with it yet. It's just a little bit small for my needs. And finally, the big day had arrived. I finally had my solo gallery show exhibition at Gallery Nucleus on October 15th. This was during my trip to California where I was tabling at Lightbox Expo. You can watch a whole other vlog about that if you want more detail. The gallery has two exhibition areas and I was upstairs in the atrium. It's a really cool little step upstairs where the walls are surrounded by all of these amazing pieces of artwork and the Nucleus team helped to organize a bunch of cute little details like that entry sign as well as a little table set up at the front where I would have my signing and talk to people. Here are the art books that I printed out. Um, this was a collection of my final pieces, some older work as well as my development sketches, as well as a little intro for the book. Because the exhibition was Pakistani themed, we had some traditional Pakistani sweets set out as well for uh, the people to enjoy like gulab jamun and jalebi, which was such a lovely detail and everyone really really enjoyed trying these out for the first time. Let me tell you guys, I was so stressed out for the past few months, I thought no one was going to show up, but thankfully a bunch of people came, even to the point where I had a lineup of people waiting to talk to me. And just overall, it was such an amazing night and I felt like the center of attention and everyone thankfully really liked my work and I even sold uh, two pieces that day. And actually, if any of you guys want to buy any of these original paintings or a print, then you can check these out on the Gallery Nucleus website. I'll leave a link at the bottom. I know I've said this a thousand times already in this video, but I literally cannot believe I was able to pull this off Thank you guys so much for watching this little vlog. I really want to continue painting. I haven't done it in a little while because I needed a break, but I can't wait to get back into it. I don't know what I'm going to paint this year, but I'm definitely going to be creative and explore and try out as many things as I can because I've just learned that painting brings me so much joy. And I hope that I might have inspired a few people watching to also pick up a paintbrush and learn to paint because guys, if I was able to do it, so can you.